for those that you maybe don't know Simon, be prepared to fall in love with this guy's absolute passion and clarity and energy that he brings to absolute, absolutely everything that he does. He is the CEO of The Nourish Life. He runs an incredible podcast called The Nourish Life uh, Show. It's amazing if you want inspiration while you run and walk or you're just bored during lockdown. I highly recommend you check it out. He's also a TEDx speaker and has really found his purpose and designed his life around it. Um, he lives, breathes um, the power of purpose. And I am so excited to have him here with us today to share his three strategies to help us unlock our purpose. So welcome, Simon. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's uh, it's an honor. Look, I, I'm so honored as well. Like watching your story. Because obviously, we had you on the podcast. Yeah. At a super like early pivotal point in your your career. So it was amazing to obviously see your pre book to now. Am I allowed to say that? Are we allowed to speak about? Yeah. yeah? So obviously now that it's led to a second one. So it's amazing. So it just shows you that obviously. All the proofs in the pudding from both of us that like all of this yeah. stuff works <laughs> with living, living examples. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for anyone right now that's really struggling, I think both me and Simon, our stories are quite similar. I think that's how we really developed our, our bond. We'll kind of dive into yours in terms of, you know, your um, athletic background, you know, how you change. But we both really went through zero from that blank page that many of you could be staring at right now and thinking I don't have a clue what I'm meant to do and some of my dreams that you know they seem silly you know like I wrote down how I want to be an author and I was like I've not I haven't written anything I don't even have a blog like you know why am I writing that down but I think the minute that you tap into the thing that you're passionate about magic happens and things unfold so you know just to put it into context why don't you share a little bit about your story um and finding your purpose. I love what you just mentioned there. Like I really struggled. Like there's there's a big period in my life where I really struggled and life didn't make sense. But as soon as I found my purpose and calling and decided to knuckle down and go all in on it, suddenly things started to make sense. <laughs> so I just love what I just love what you just said. But my story's my story's a bit of a fun one, really. So in, in short, or else this live stream will go on for hours. But really I started off as an athlete and um, nearly went to the Olympics as a gymnast. Um, but obviously, like doing that from the age of three up until 14, 15, 14, I think it was, I, I came away from that. And if you can imagine training every hour God sends, doing nutrition plans, um, being judged for bending a toe, like you're the worst human in the world if you bend a toe. I came out of that sport a little messed up. And at the time, I didn't really understand it, but I, I came out very lost. So from yeah. the age of 15, didn't really know what I wanted to do. I went to college because my friends were there. I really struggled. Now that I look back with the identity of letting go of that, I, I was in the middle ground for a long time, clutching at straws, um, mm -hmm. not really following the things that I loved or enjoyed because I was scared, but going with the crowd and being a bit of a sheep and a people pleaser, yeah. serial people pleaser at that point. Um, so basically from that point, ended up... Um, falling back in love with the fitness industry. We ended up building a huge personal training company that then went global. We were helping people all over the world. It was very early to that. I grew a very big business at a very young age. Uh, I had a complete penthouse to basement moment with that business, <laughs> which, <laughs> which brought, brought me crashing down to um, the, the biggest business lessons of my life at a very young age. But also it was the, it was the life I created wasn't mine. I, I built this life. Um, I built all these businesses for everything that wasn't me. And um, I'm grateful that it all fell to bits because it, it was the slap I needed to gr grow the balls and have the courage to be myself um, yeah. and go and do the things that I actually wanted to do in life. And I think it's very, I think it's very similar to your story from the corporate transition. So what's your story? Let's, let's get on this. Yeah. Let's, let's two ways. <laughs> very similar so I mean I've always had a passion for um psychology and mindset I studied it at university absolutely loved it um you know kind of learned to navigate the way the, the world in the same way that you did through achievement and pleasing and performing and perfecting um and so was very happy for a number of years until I wasn't and I realized that the tools that I use to navigate the world you know pleasing other people you know getting stay this achieving success creating a life that looked great on the outside but wasn't fulfilling on the inside um 
the side effect of that was it caused me to lose myself and I really didn't know what I was doing it for who I was doing it for I certainly wasn't doing it for myself and I had to get off that treadmill didn't know how I hit the big kind of like you know red emergency stop button on the treadmill and literally jumped off into the unknown <laughs> and I it had stops no pretty quick doesn't it <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So by having all my staff, you know, and I'm not necessarily recommending that as a strategy. I just think that was a sign of how lost I really was. And I know people can look and think, oh, it's easy for you to say, you know, you're an author or Simon, you know, you're living in, in Bali, traveling the world, running your, your business. You know, it's different for me. But like we were those people just a few years ago. And, and I really I know how troubling it is to think of that question what is my purpose and stare at that blank page and feel so disconnected from yourself that you can't find the answer and hopefully if you feel like that this live's going to give you some relief today and we're going to share the words Simon's going to share some strategies that I think we wish we had of known back then because you know with the strategies that you're going to share it will speed up the process and take out some of that pain for people um, given the feedback and obviously like we've got, we've got so many media channels at the minute and so is yourself, like this really is like when we were talking about topics, I was like, this is the topic I get asked all the time. I am yeah. lost. I am stuck. And I really feel that once you kind of like find this suddenly everything like directions, decisions, yeah. focus, discipline, why am I doing this? Everything just gets easier, but like we both just said, like in order to get there, or I always like to use the word come home in order to come home. Yeah, and I, I think that's home. where you find purpose. Yeah, um, I think in order to get there means you really have to shake up the snow globe and like you did, hit stop or, <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? So I, I always think in, that's the hardest step is that step. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is actually that committing that. to doing that or, or admitting, one, admitting one, that you lost. Yeah, admitting that you're lost, I think that's yeah, straight up. hard. Um, admitting that you deserve more as well, you know, because when life looks great on the outside, how do you then describe to other people that you're not really happy on the inside? You know, I felt really ungrateful. I felt like a bad person when I first started this journey because I was thinking... Like you have everything, you just don't know how to be happy. You know, you like you're ungrateful, you know, learn how to live with what you have. But it doesn't matter what you have, you know, you can have all the money in the world. You know, we have we see examples of the media of, you know, celebrities who have everything, but on the inside they're not happy. And what quality of life is that, you know? Oh, this is awesome. I've never had this platform. I've never had a platform to share this, but um, I had that moment. So we obviously had that. And I remember being asked all the time, like, Simon, are you happy? And I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you know when you say something like deep yeah. down, like your, your intuition is like, dude, you're full of shit. Like, no, you're not. Like, I had that. And um, I had this really like odd experience when I, I basically burned my life to the floor. I was like, no, I'm going to go and see what happens if I, if I commit to all of this sort of stuff. And then um, I bumped in. To, so think of this, like, 12 year difference, 12 year difference um, from building the, the first business I built, which was the, the young one, which was the penthouse, the basement moment one. The first ever client that bought, signed up with us, I bumped into her when I was 25, 26. And that was the point where I was like, I'm not happy with all of this. I'm going to go and follow all of these things. And she asked me again, she, she asked me, she was like, are you happy? And I was like, I didn't have any of the stuff I had back then. But when she asked me that, I was like, you know what? Like, yeah, I actually am. And it was the first time that it it was true. It was a real, it was a real answer. Yeah, that so. authentic goodness. I think that's that's the motivation to keep on going on this journey. You know, if you feel really stuck right now and finding your purpose and you don't have a clue and you feel overwhelmed and you know, you kind of know you're about to go against the norm and that feels scary because you're like you said, you know, you're a sheep and you're about to deviate, you know, from the herd. Yeah. stick with it because that authentic happiness is your reward at the end and so much more beyond that but there is no better feeling than coming home and finding that purpose and I think that's a great story and, and a real life example because obviously you're on here and I think if we can like I think between us both we can probably tailor a conversation that could really be quite powerful here I always get asked this and I'd love your take on this what does purpose mean to you what is purpose people feel like they've got no purpose but how do you know what you've not got if you don't know what it actually is so hmm. 
I think purpose is something that evolves and I think it's it's a feeling not a thing so when I know that I'm doing and I think that's about why you have to strip so much away to come back home to come back to that inner voice and that inner intuition because I can't describe necessarily you know in words like what what is right or what is wrong because a lot of the decisions that I make when it comes to purpose aren't necessarily logical but it feels right it's a knowing it's an inner knowing so purpose for me is just this sense of alignment that it might not make sense on paper like hey Sarah sell your house quit your job (laughs) you know like leave with a backpack leave your career behind like that doesn't make sense and I know that you know my background is psychology I'm very science-based But even though it didn't make sense, it felt right. It felt more right than anything else that I could, that that I I could think of. It was the kind of like most powerful feeling. So for me, purpose means like following your heart and your intuition. I absolutely love that because it is, it's purpose is a feeling, not a thing. And it's the same with goals. People, people's goals revolve around feelings. People suck at goals or getting goals when they disattach it. So like usually if you ask someone, why do you want to lose weight? The, the actual feeling behind it is confidence. That's the purpose yeah. behind that goal. You know what I mean? But usually the approach will leave them less confident. Why? It's an unfulfilling feeling. So I, yeah. I, I love how you how you, you phrase that. I just think it's such an interesting thing to hear. Like what's your, like from an expert who's done, doing wonders in this field, like, I think you summed that up really well, is we, we chase feelings. Yeah, yeah. And I think a purpose becomes its own justification you don't necessarily do it for the reward because it's in it's an intrinsic reward. It rewards you. So I think before, you know, the lives that we're describing, we built for other people, you know, to kind of, it's your exterior to the world that I'm okay, I'm successful, you know, well, I have a house, I have a job, I have this, I have that. Um, but, I, and so you work for those things, but a purpose, you work for something else, you work for the feeling that it gives you, you work um, for the justification of fulfilling your role in the world rather than the rewards that it brings. Yeah. So tell us, like, if I was, if I'm watching this right now and I'm like, this sounds amazing, it sounds great, I want this feeling of authentic happiness, I want to be led by that inner feeling, but I don't know how to access that inner feeling. You know, how do you start communicating with what your purpose is? How do you find it? I think, I think we, we even go before that, personally. Mm-hmm. I think the world has come to a position where, like, a lot of people are lost and stuck. Like, I don't know what I want to go and do out of life. And that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Like, I was there for a lot of years. But I think in order to sometimes find purpose, like, going around this, it sometimes means that you have to break the norm. And a lot of people's routines become a rut. And it means stepping into variety, trying new things, getting into new environments, like around new things. Like you can't find the new in the old. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like a relationship. You're never going to meet new people if you've got hanging out with the same people at the same bars, doing the same things all the time. And I think first is to establish whereabouts are you in in your own individual journey? Because if you don't know where purpose is, you might have to really go and shake. I had to go and shake that snow globe up completely. I had to grab the fucking thing and shake it like crazy. Um... But I, I made a commitment to myself, like for two years, I said yes to absolutely everything, Dif- working in different industries, trying new businesses, mm-hmm. public speaking. I never saw myself doing that because I, I didn't have a voice. I had no confidence. And now it's my career. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's going out there and like going, do you know what? I don't actually know what I want to do. And that's OK. Like, there's not a problem with that at all, because I, I think a lot of us have been there. But it is the permission slip to go out there, try and do new things, try everything that the world has to offer. And I always think that if you find joy, excitement, happiness, fun, or the feeling of knowing, then those are the red flags to it, to it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Exactly. And for, for me as well, this is when it comes down to business. Like you spend a third of your life unconscious, asleep. You spend a third of your life at work and you spend a third of your life on your own terms. So when you really find out what your purpose, what you're calling, what your mission is, it allows you to make the two thirds of the life that you're awake and that you're conscious for fun, exciting, like waking up, like I can go and do this. You know what I mean? yeah. and I think it's a, 
I think it's a, a very beautiful moment the day when you, you realize it, but then you have the courage to go and follow it. So again, before your question is, I kind of knew, but did I follow? No. Yeah, I love that. So right. I, I, you know, to sum up, I think it's, that's a really beautiful point. And I think often it is a step that people miss because it's like, okay, I'm going to decide my purpose and then I'm going to do it because we want to relieve that pain point of not knowing. But when you grab the hand of curiosity, which is exactly what you're describing, shake that snow globe, you know, try different things. What would it feel like if I worked in that industry? What would it feel like if I went to that meetup event? You know, um, how would it feel if I did that? Like where pay attention to those activities that kind of light you up that it doesn't feel like work. Um, like I can remember talking to my friend who quit her job and um, she's now um, very successful and um, owns her own business in New York. And I remember consulting her for advice. And I was like, is it not really hard to run your own business? Like, I don't think it's something that I want to do. Just feels like too much hard work. And she was like, it doesn't feel like work when you find what you want to do. Like, you, it, you'll never work a day in your life again. You know, and I think that's so true. Like, I wake up in the morning and it's a joy to do this. You know, I, I love my job. So get curious. Try different things, and I think curiosity takes the weight out of that need to get it right or wrong because you're just experimenting. A hundred percent. I think curiosity is point number one. I think yeah. first, honesty. Admit that it's okay if you don't know, and then do you know what I mean? I think curiosity is point number one. A hundred percent. But then I also think, and this would be my step number two on this. Yeah. I can tell you now. Well, let's just tool back to what you were saying. I always look at the psychology of procrastination. Mm. procrastination is a pretty big red flag like that you're not excited to do the task at hand so I think that's already a very big red flag if you keep putting something off or you're scared to go and do it I think th those are the two modalities with procrastination but anyway back on track so I think when you do find that I think the next the next logical step is to work out what your strengths and your weaknesses are mm. because I find the world now tries to over index and build so much on their weaknesses Mm -hmm. that they don't pay any attention and go all in on the strengths. Love this. Love this. That would be my step number two, <laughs> is Love find this. your strengths. So can Push you give us an example? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can I give you a lot, a lot of examples. <laughs> yeah, I love this. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what that means to me, and then you can tell me if, if what I'm hearing is right. So um, I feel very passionate about managing like the different parts of yourself um, and that every part of you has a good side and a bad side. So, for example, if I look at my strength, you know, that that inner achiever in me is still there, like that person that, you know, strive to be at the top of their career. Like she is very, very still DNA. Like, very much in part your of me. DNA. Oh, yeah. Right. And I don't want to get rid of her. I like her. She's kind of cool. She gets me up in the morning. But the, the negative side of her, like the weakness is I can push myself too hard. I can take too much on and I can lose patience because I can become very all or nothing. And if something doesn't work, I drop it. So what I kind of hear is like, you know, looking at that strength, the corresponding weakness, and then learning how you best manage that. I like to use this tool with people is I think I don't call it a weakness. So I think I call it shadows. So yeah, I think. Yeah, I think your strengths are an asset, but they'll also have a shadow. So for me, I'm very similar. If I get too excited, like this event, what, like, like you, you, it was stupid, but it was a ace at the same time. But at the same time, my action orientation, my drive to go and do something also meant I sacrificed sleep. I didn't sleep for about three days. <laughs> so yeah. like there's, there's a shadow there, which means sometimes yeah. it can lead to biting off a bit more than you can chew. It means you can go to burnout. So I think as well as noticing what your strengths are is also work out what the shadow side of your strength is as well. Um, I find a lot of A-type personalities will lose their purpose because they'll go two dimensional with it. They'll forget about other things like the relationships, the health. And once one of those goes, suddenly you've got to pull back and pull away from purpose. So as well as getting rid of the weaknesses or so to speak, or limiting those, going in on your strengths, but then also how do you maintain and keep in the strengths where you're not jump into shadow yeah uh, yeah I really like that and a big part of the journal system for flow that I use is the nighttime reflection 
And so it's so important for me at night just to continually do that little check-in on myself to say, you know, where am I? Like, it goes back to that honesty bit that you mentioned in point one. You know, where am I at? You know, am I using my strengths or or am I shining so bright on the strengths that the shadow's getting bigger and bigger and it's eventually going to catch up with me? Oh. <laughs> Snaps is the pullback, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But uh, the, the fun thing is, as well, I, I'm loving this about this whole conversation again, because I, I, I love it when me and you talk, we just knit. <laughs> I guess. Um, self awareness. Like, self awareness yeah. is point number three. You can know your purpose, you can know your why. Do you allow your strengths to leverage your purpose? But are you self aware to know maybe that the purpose isn't the purpose anymore? Are you self aware en enough to know has it become too much of something? Is, are you self aware enough to know are you still on track with it? Yes. And, that's why I like what you, you keep saying is you're reflecting, you know, and I think it's like the GPS on a ship. I think as soon as you know your why, you've got to be self-aware enough to make sure that the, the ship's always heading in the right direction. Yeah, ab absolutely. Absolutely. And taking those micro steps, you know, so like just as a quick recap, we've got, you know, curiosity. Don't be afraid to shake the snow globe up, you know, go out, try new things, get feedback from that. You know, like, oh, I really enjoyed that. A new you know, snow like, globe. Just go and get a new snow globe <laughs> if you're really lost. Oh, I love that snow globe. <laughs> <Smash it. laughs> yeah, yeah. And like see where that takes you. And then when you understand that, bring in that self-awareness, start to shine that spotlight on these are my strengths, these are my weaknesses, these are the things that I'm going to need to be aware of as I go on this journey so that I don't burn out and I have patience and that I design something that really suits and brings out my strengths as opposed to spending so long trying to fix my weaknesses because I feel like I'm broken you're not broken you're totally fine you just need to harness those strengths I love that point and then number three bring that self-awareness through reflection and I would just add to that just because I think um, you touched on procrastination and I think purpose and procrastination go hand in hand because we think it has to be this kind of like big aha moment, um, which sometimes it is, and that's great. Um, but so normally, in my case, it was like a series of O's, like, oh, okay, oh, that's interesting. And then gradually it leads to that kind of like, <laughs> That, that bigger aha moment so don't be afraid to take right. those micro steps like you've got to align with that purpose and take action no matter how small it is as you take that action then you bring in the self-reflection you know how did I feel about that what went well what could have went better you know and then it grows from that point well, like, this is what I love about what we do and I think this is where we, we stand out as well like especially in the area that you do and what we, we kind of do to with the personal performance stuff is like you can have a life purpose and a calling which is cool but i think like in any area of life whether you want to do the core four which is health health fitness xyz uh love which is me relationships social family then you've got uh health uh, wealth finances career then you've got growth and life adventure mm -hmm. i think the the real the real pivotal moment i see with people is when they kind of work they might not know what the umbrella one is yeah i think that one sometimes i did that one might come at different points uh, i know mine did but when i understood what like again i like i love the love version of it like so many people go for a relationship but what is the purpose of a relationship why do you want to be in a relationship what does it mean for you what do you get from it like what is that like are you or are you just going to continually search around the world for this person that you don't yeah. know who is what she looks like same in business like do you know what i mean so i think there's a there's a very good moment when you separate your purpose into individual areas and you yeah. know what it is like what do i want from my health my fitness my emotional my spiritual my mental health what is the purpose for me as an individual within that area because yeah. then you'll take intentional actions the same applies to relationships what's the purpose yeah. of a relationship you know who am i who am i in a relationship who is the person same in business like what what excites me like two-thirds of my life like what do i want to do for me it ended up communications speaking mm -hmm. traveling and weirdly which i never thought that would have come up <laughs> but but this one just is like it's like oh you start to connect the dots um, yeah. and, and on that you can only live life looking forwards but you can only connect the dots and work it out looking backwards. So, so that's something fun. Very, yeah. So yeah. and then and then the same in like life adventure and growth. What do you want to learn? Like where do you want to go in the world? Like what's the purpose? Yeah. 
and yeah. that's um that ties in really well to, to flow because in unified flow it's you take this larger goal from which all smaller goals logically follow and then everything operates from this place of alignment which is exactly what you're describing and i think when you get to that place you know every every action that you make makes sense because you understand why you're doing it you understand the greater purpose that it's feeding into and as human beings we are meaning makers like that makes our brains happy you know like th that's where we feel our best and perform our best whenever we know why we're doing something now you touch on a great point and that actually goes into some of the questions and um, so i love that we are totally knitting this together it's perfect um, and back on something though like what you were saying then about the umbrella like i always find this like when you're living your purpose in those areas i always like that i use a diagram in speaking gigs and it's like a pyramid yeah and if all of those areas are intentionally moving forwards actions everything's growing and moving towards that suddenly the glass ceiling gets further you might aim for a book in life but then the next thing you're like oh shit maybe a netflix special <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. do you know what i mean you, you start totally. to grow confidence in the action yeah and the intention and you, you start to believe in yourself more it's a uh, yeah, totally, crazy yeah, totally like i thought one book would have been amazing you know to get book two and then all of a sudden you you start to do things that you never thought were possible and then you start to believe in yourself more and it, it just kind of scales and grows from there. And the purpose for me has always roughly been the same, but the goals are kind of ever changing. And that's what makes it exciting. That's like, you're just, it, it is, it's so life changing when you kind of hit upon that thing that you feel like you're meant to do. It, it just, it changes your whole experience of life. So here's a quick question. It changes question. your life, but it presents you like, because yeah. you've got to go shit. This is the person who I, and it's again, identity. The story of my life is who do I need to be? Who do I want to be to have this? Who am I being? And there's, ooh, when you see that disconnect, usually things need to change to get that. Yeah, the so. working self and the higher self, just like closing them. Yeah, it's the key. So I've got some questions from um, from people who either are on the live or I think most people like couldn't make the live. Um, and I've kind of grouped them into categories because a lot of them were similar. And um, the first one was, um, you know, are you ever too old to discover your purpose? Not at all. Um, like, okay, I'm really going to work on a tangent here. <laughs> you can... A lot of the time, we, we are animals of habit. And when something becomes a habit, it becomes subconscious. Now, how many of us, I was one, are living our lives in an automatic pattern? We're getting up, we're doing the same thing. We're not having to think differently. We drive to work. But now suddenly we don't have to think necessarily to drive to work. We just end up at work. It's now subconscious. Yeah. But I think there's, there's a very big point in this when you consciously decide to get in the driving seat of your own life. And I think the moment you decide or you find that initial piece of gold, there's no looking back. And I don't think you're ever too old um, at all, but it's all you can, you just start like the red flags are already there. Yeah. You probably might be feeling it if you've got anxiety, if you've got fear, if you've got depressions, if you've got things like that, maybe the red flags are already presenting themselves. If you're not happy at work, if you're not happy in a relationship, like it's there. Like, do you know what I mean? I think me and you were saying on our podcast that, you know what I mean? Like thoughts, the language of the mind, feelings, the language of the body. Yeah. You disconnect. If you're not feeling great, but you're telling yourself you feel good, it's, it's disconnect. You, you know, at some level, you know. Yeah. So um, I don't think you're ever too old to find it. But I think the day you wake up and decide to sit in the driving seat of your own life is a beautiful day. And I think it's the start of a lot of great things. It's also the start of a lot of scary things because you'll yeah. be presented with a lot of fears, yeah. a lot of changes, um, but that's growth. And yeah. my first mentor summed it up really well. He was like, look, if at the end of the day, this was all easy and it was linear. You'd have a very boring biography at the end of it. It's like all these challenges, it's so the true. hero's journey. Yeah. so true yeah I agree never too old just kind of get off that autopilot if you can get into the driving seat you know I've 
work with kind of many clients who are kind of in their 40s, 50s, kind of like and beyond who have just went, you know, I've lived my life for other people. I've lived it for my kids. I've lived it for my family. They have now all kind of like left the nest. And now I'm kind of thinking, actually, I haven't really done what I wanted to do. So I never think there is like, you know, a time not to start. Um, also, like, we, I always think on this, list, like, why are we not taught this at school? Like, oh, we no. taught all of these subjects, but we're not taught about ourselves. You're not asked, like, who are you? Who are you when you're on your own and no one's watching? Yeah. What yeah, are the things you. that you enjoy? Who are you when you're not attached to your business identity? Who are you when you're not in a relationship? Who are you, really? I think, like, when you know all of these questions, it's the fertilizer for, for everything. Yeah, but I, re you, I really, really do think that. When you don't, it's really scary. Like, when I think back to me kind of, like, three years ago, I think that was the scariest bit was because when you stripped all that back, there was just a big question mark. Like, I couldn't tell you the answer. And, you know, I talk about this a little in the book, which was I remember going to... Uh, Jillian Michaels talk like a motivational talk and she said um write down in your book three things that you love to do that you do just for you for no other reason and like in this kind of seminar hall that was in Birmingham in the UK and like everyone's writing down and I'm like just staring at my blank page going I don't have a clue like I literally don't know what I do just for me and so I wrote down the three imaginary hobbies that I've had since I was like 13 that I put on my CV like reading walking cycling because I was like I don't know like I don't know and I can remember leaving that feeling like I actually don't know who I am and that's the scariest feeling ever and I think anyone that has the courage to look at that in the face I applaud you and I celebrate you for doing that because I know how absolutely terrifying the journey is. And if you're at that point, all I can do is that, like encourage you just to keep going um, because it, it is worth it in the end, but it is terrifying to strip all that back. I always think you have two, there's two modalities to do this. I think if you ignore the signs for long enough, you ignore the pains, you ignore the lessons, you ignore all the red flags for so long, Something happens, a health issue, a bankruptcy, a yeah. breakup. And I think you get the, the universal crack to wake up and take control. Or you choose. And one's full of pain. The other one's is painful, <laughs> kind of painful, but also, yeah. it, do you know what I mean? You choose. Yeah. I think those are the two things. I think if those are kind of like the ways that, do you know what I mean? Are you ignoring the call to... To, to wake up and go and follow your purpose like that that's the bit that was my my story yeah like, I, I got the universal crack big time and it hurts like yeah yeah it really hurts <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's not it's not a pleasant process at the start because it is like this cracking open um and that, that it's like a rebirth and it is painful um but there is so much light it's like just climbing your way slowly out of that pit you know getting curious like understanding yourself and I love what you said at the start because I think it is so beautifully put and it is a hard thing maybe to understand these words when you're on the other side but when you break through and you realize that you're just coming home to yourself like that is the journey and it I know maybe if you had have told me that at the start I would have been like what the fuck does that even mean coming home like that makes no sense to me like I want to get away from home like I don't want to be myself like I don't know who I am but you do you unravel and you you do make the journey back to who you are so so stick with it the whole self I think this is where the self-development world is really screwing people over like I think everyone's so obsessed with putting more stuff into the box learn 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 that everyone's forgetting to take out the things that don't work yeah yeah okay. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. It's like, oh, okay. I actually do like doing this. So, you know what I mean? I'm scared of doing this, but I really enjoy it. So, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll, yeah, that, yeah. I'm in total agreement with that. Total agreement with that. And then the other question, which I actually kind of think that you've answered already, which was, um, does purpose have to be a career? You know, like, do you have to build? Do you have to change your kind of? Because we obviously have aligned our purpose to the work that we do. But do you think that's do you think that's necessary? Not at all. I think I think usually we it's there's usually it's either love or service. 
love, service, or achievement, I think are the, the three biggest drivers that most people are striving for. You usually say in business circles, when we're doing business consulting, you can see businesses which are going to fail. Uh, you, there's usually three drivers, significant success or service. Businesses mm-hmm. that lead through service will gain the significance and um, success through that. Yeah. And I think the biggest, like, I think fulfillment, like, Every time I do these questions or like when people are struggling with this question or a business owner, they always say, what are the three most, the best days of your life? And usually the ones that most people will say are an act of service, which is a good language as well, isn't it? So I I always think that usually it's, it'll either come down to one of those things. It'll either come down to love. um, It'll come down to helping other people, which is myself, or it'll come down to an achievement. And I think usually most people's purposes will revolve around those or maybe adventure. Um, yeah. if you look at it, Beautiful. but that really does break. I think that just kind of like sums up human, human, humans as a whole. I think the, the, those not, those not why we're here. Yeah. Adventure, see the world to love yeah. each other. Yeah. I think purpose brings, <laughs> when you tap into your purpose, it brings out all the best human qualities that we have for sure. And it does enable you to make that impact on the world. Cause I think we all regardless of where we're at you know and our strengths and it doesn't matter I think we all have this innate desire to leave the world a better place than when we find it and to to have some form of an impact and to feel fulfilled on the journey so that's really beautiful and I love those three points um so yeah just a quick recap get curious shape the snow globe or break it as you said um be aware of those strengths you know, focus in on those, how can you harness those? And then also be aware of the shadow side that it casts, you know, what those, you know, weaknesses kind of like in inverted commas are, you know, what is, I think it's called Young says, you know, for every good, there's a corresponding evil, you know, so like when you have that strength, what kind of is the byproduct of it? And then three, self-reflection, you know, look then at like what you're doing, pay attention to things that you enjoy, pay attention to the direction that you're moving in and take those micro steps kind of each day. And if people want to kind of get in touch with you and know more about, you know, your journey or the incredible words of wisdom that you impart on a daily basis, how is it best to connect with you? That little bone there, that tag. Yeah, that's that's me. (laughs) There's that. Um, if I was going to add one more to that as well, I yeah, I do you bonus bonus round? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 is this six? Like, I don't know where I'm, but I'd also say it's okay to pivot. Like, there can be points in time when you can follow one dream, adventure, calling, mission, purpose, but then you can wake up the next day. I think you're a different person every day, and what lights yeah. up one day can change, and it can be different. I think sometimes we hold on to something through pride and we don't pivot and let go and change. Um, I know again, in my experience, I knew, but I never let go and I should have pivoted quicker and I didn't. And I think it's okay. Like one day you can wake up and go, do you know what? This isn't what I thought it'd be. I loved it. It served its purpose. I grew, but it's not the next step. And yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. So connect with Simon on Instagram, check out his podcast. Um, He's just an incredible inspiration. But more than that, practice what he preaches and gives really practical how-to advice as well. So you can feel fired up and motivated, but also actually know what the next steps are. So I'd love to know your biggest takeaways from this. You know, pop them in the comments below. If you're watching this on the replay on Instagram, then, you know, still pop your questions in the comments below. Just tag me or Simon and then we can get back to you. But thank you so much for joining me. It's an absolute pleasure to see you. Sure. Take a screenshot. Yeah. Put it in your social. Oh, yeah. It's always the best one. Yeah. <laughs>